You want to like them, but you can't. Are you listening? What? Are you listening? Did you bring me on this show to insult me? Yeah. Uh. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh. Yeah. Hey, y'all don't want it with us, uh. man. You say gangsters over there, Straight man. Great Ah. Uh. Yeah. yeah, good morning and welcome back. You are listening to Scout Team Radio. We bring it to you hot and live each and every morning, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. I am one of your gracious hosts. They call me Loudbeard. You are the most egotistical, self-deluded person I have ever met. And the man on the other microphone, he is a great, great, great... American. America. America. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is your boy, Chris America, coming to you live this Friday. Loudbeard, it is Friday, April 23rd, 2019. And I remember the day, I remember the date, and I have the year down. I am ready to rock and roll. It takes me five whole days, five whole days to get through a week of uh, mental blockage and just just trying to get stretched out and everything. And, um, yeah, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm ready to go on a Friday. We have a lot of exciting things coming up. We got um, some hockey talk. We got a little little heat on Twitter last night or, or, the, or in the early evening from one of our fans who, I guess, listened to our podcast, which, by the way, you can check out our podcast if you can't make the live show. Or you, you made the live show and you missed parts of it. Either way, check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, and ScoutTeamRadio.com. Just search for Scout Team Radio and you can get us there. And uh, Loudbeard, are you there? I'm, I'm always here, Chris America. Right. Where, would I, where else I would I be? I don't know. Yeah. You were here You're here at the beginning of the show. And then I thought I heard something where you weren't here. And then I thought I heard you were back. So no, good, I'm, I'm good to back. see that you were able to, 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 to lead us into the show, give us a great intro. And I'm um, glad you're back. Yeah, you did great with my intro. I do I do appreciate that. Um, or I did great with my intro. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry we're starting a couple minutes late this morning. Uh, sometimes yeah, that okay. happens. We're real people. You may have already talked people. about that. We're real you're people. You're like, hey, just roll. Roll with it. Like, pretend like nothing yeah. ever happened. Yeah. I did. No, I always like to point nothing out our Nothing did flaws. happen. Yeah, nothing at all. There was nothing to see here. Uh, nothing at all. Yeah, um, and... For some reason, Chris America, th- this is just me venting my frustrations to you for just a moment here, so the world can hear, is yeah. there is a random ghost that goes in and sets some internal setting in the computer where it mutes the mixer coming in from, yep. and... I, it's the studio ghost. Of course, ghost. right when I want to start, I, I, I restart the computer, and I'm thinking, okay, it'll work. No- nope, it's the studio ghost, goes in and gives me a mute, and I've learned how to fix it, but it takes me about two or, two or three extra minutes. Typically, I test it ahead of time, but every once in a while, I'll get confident and be like, oh, I, I'm good to go. I, it worked yesterday. It worked the day ghost. before. It worked the day before, and the studio ghost kicks me in the ass every time. It's ridiculous. I think the studio ghost also implants that, that false sense of security inside of you. Like He uh, does yeah. the change, and then he puts false sense of security inside of your brain. If I ever see that jerk in a back alley, a dark back alley, I think I, I might stab him. Can the you stab a ghost? That is. Um, like, did hmm. the Ghostbusters make, like, a ghost-busting knife? You know, what'll probably happen is it'll be like that scene with Slimer, and Slimer just, like, flies right through me, and then I get slimed. Yeah. Um, that sounds awful. The studio ghost wins every time, Chris America. There's nothing I can do. I feel like I'm no. helpless. Studio ghost can't stop, won't stop. Yeah, he's basically the Thanos of uh, sports talk radio. I hate him. There's no defeating yeah. him. There's only one in 14 million and 65 ways of defeating the studio ghost. There's only one, Chris America. So, speaking of Thanos, Loudbeard, do you know how once these movies come out, there's there's a whole bunch of people that break things down way deeper than you would have ever thought. Oh yeah. So That's I what watched the this whole. Great for. I watched this whole video about how Thanos isn't truly a bad guy. He's just a misguided 
soul. And they went through all the different fight scenes that he had in um, Infinity War. And he only killed one person in the movie like with his hands, and that was Loki. When he had several opportunities to kill almost every single hero in the movie, and he never did. Like He had a chance to kill um, Doctor Strange. Like He had him by the throat, and he could have killed him just like he killed Loki, but he just threw him aside. And they, were, they just went through... Every single fight scene, like when he fought um, all of the good guys at the end of the movie, you know how like Captain America and Falcon and all of them are just attacking him? Like he doesn't kill any of them. He just tosses them to the side. And the only people he, other people that he kills is he kills Vision to get the stone and he kills Gamora to get the stone. But he never actually kills anybody. He's almost like Batman. He's almost like a superhero in a way because superheroes never kill bad guys. They just kind of incapacitate them. And then, like, try to, you know, send him to prison. But I, I found that kind of kind of interesting, deeper level. Because I've always liked Thanos as a bad guy because of how deep of a character they made him. Wow, you're bringing the next-gen stats I, I on am Avengers bringing the next Infinity gen. I, I, I sat there and I watched this, like, four-minute video on this. And I was just like, oh, and man, that's, that's, that's pretty crazy. I never never thought of that. Yeah, Why he didn't um, kill more people. It, I mean... Part of it's the cinematic feel to it because you don't want to get all your heroes killed because in the very beginning in that Loki scene, he's got his hand over Thor's head and then he puts the stone up to Thor. Like, he could have easily killed Thor in that point. You're right. There's so many spots where yeah, he could have killed Thor I mean, that was another people. part where he had Thor in chains and everything else at the beginning of the movie. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah. No, at the end of the movie, if I remember correctly, I don't want to spoil Infinity War for everybody because it did come out last year and you haven't had plenty of time to go see it. But spoiler alert for Infinity War, not Endgame, Infinity War. But didn't he snap his fingers and kill half of the world? Yeah, so so that was my thing. Is I think for him, when, he, when it came, that's where he was misguided. Okay. For him, it was all about population control and and save the universe because we are taking up too many resources and so he i think when he snapped his fingers he just knew that 50 percent of the world would die at random and I, I also thought about this before like how did thanos know that it wasn't going to be him like if it's just a random 50 percent how did thanos know that he wouldn't be on that wrong side unless maybe he's like hey 50 percent but me and then snapped his fingers i'm pretty sure he would do but me he is the one wielding the infinity gauntlet the most powerful weapon in the universe I think he could easily say, okay, well, I can snap my fingers and kill half the, the world. Oh, let me go ahead and put myself on the exemption list. Right? Wouldn't that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think that's pretty, pretty feasible there. Um, but, yeah, uh, the fan theories to me are crazy and the deep breakdowns. I mean, you could go right now and go on YouTube and just search, like, Avengers theories or Avenger breakdown, and you could probably find – Eight million videos, and it's people sitting there, just every scene going deep into. Well, this happened for this reason. I think this happened for this. This is going to be a future adventure into Marvel, and I, I get myself stuck. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm like you. I get stuck sometimes looking at those things. Um, I know I watched a couple synopsis from Endgame, and not not to spoil that movie, but there was a couple scenes where they're like, "This is setting up a." a a storyline to go off in the future. They said there was a earthquake in the Atlantic Ocean. That could add another character, Namor, who was basically Aquaman of Marvel. He could be a future character because they set it up in Endgame. So I I've seen all these theories where every little scene has nuances that could eventually lead to something else. But if you look at something hard enough, you can find whatever you want. It's like looking at clouds, right? I could look up at a cloud and say, oh, look, that looks like Jesus. No, that looks like a pile of dog poop. Like, I, I don't know. It's whatever you want to look at it. It's however you want to do it. You can examine something a hundred different ways and come with a hundred different theories. But the Internet, it does find a way to make it crazy. Well, there are things called Easter eggs inside movies that are planted in there for a reason and for a purpose. And I think filmmakers probably have fun doing those things. Oh, yeah. I, I think on the Marvel side, there's been more Easter eggs than I've, right. I've seen in any other kind of movie. So, yeah. And you that's, know who the original Easter egg thing was, right? Yeah, Peter Rabbit. No. Um, Easter Bunny. No, it was uh, Walt Disney World. It, Ooh. There's, it's the Hidden Mickeys. I don't know how long Hidden Mickeys have been around, but I feel like it's been around since I can remember. 
And if you go around the park of Disney, there's literally like, I don't know how many, maybe 100, 1,000. There's hidden Mickeys all over the park throughout all of the rides. And like people make a game out of it. People who love Disney World and go there all the time. Like they love trying. It's almost like a little scavenger hunt. Can you find all 100 Disney or hidden Mickeys? I don't know how many there are, but there's a lot. So I think that was the first ever Easter egg. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Um, what about that scene in Lion King where it says sex in the smoke? Is that an Easter egg? What's that? That scene in Lion King where it says, like, doesn't it say oh, sex? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when they jump Isn't that the, an Easter egg? The flowers. That's yeah, I think one. it is. Yeah, that's, that's probably one of the first Easter eggs I knew about. There we that go. One. That's another one. That's a classic. I uh, feel like there's a couple other, like, Disney ones that were inappropriate. Um, that's another thing. If you YouTube it, you're going to find several hundred videos of people breaking down every Disney movie looking for inappropriate things in the background. All right. Well, hey, Loudbeard, I'm going to pull back the curtain for a second for the studio yep, audience. Okay. So Loudbeard and I are in two different studios, and we're connected through an online studio, and that's how you're hearing us. And right now, Loudbeard on my side, I don't know if he's on your side, but I got poor internet connection here, I guess. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to log out because I'm hearing like every other word you say. So give me one second, and you can kind of talk about maybe, maybe roll us into the 76ers game. From last night. All right, there was a 76ers game last night. Um, well, as Chris America kind of pulls himself together there, we can go and talk about this uh, 76ers game because they play the Raptors, and we all know that this is going to be a great series. But Sixers kind of handle business pretty easily on their home court last night. Take care of the Raptors. Final score in this one's 116 to 95. I'm still thinking the Raptors are going to take this series, but the Sixers are making a heck of an argument. Uh, they're making an argument to say, don't con- count us out. When you have the likes of Joel Embiid and, and Ben Simmons and, and Jimmy Butler and and the whole crew, Tobias Harris, J.J. Redick, this is a stacked lineup, and the Sixers are showing that they are that good of a team. And to put, the, put it on the Raptors like that last night, it was a very impressive game. Not entertaining to watch. Now, there was a couple little controversies in this one. Uh, There was a a situation where there was an elbow to Kyle Lowry's mm, below-the-waist section. Okay, it's family-friendly. And that didn't get called, and that became a a little bit of a hot topic after this game. And there was also another play later in the game where there was a tripping situation where Siakam, I believe he was trying to trip Embiid, and he got called a uh, foul on this one. And, uh, you know, it's just, I, th- I think it's just playoff basketball, okay? Things happen. Elbows get thrown. Maybe accidental tripping here or there. I mean, it, it happens. It's playoff basketball. We're expecting these guys to get chippy, and it'll just get worse as the series gets on. Right, Chris America? Do you like right. a little chippiness in your... I uh, do like a little chippiness. I do love a little little brawling, a little fighting going on. It's it's all about that competitive edge, and um, so one thing that I th- took away from last night's game, Ladbeard. Yes, I, I took away hope, hope for our magic. Yes, Ladbeard, that's how much of an egotistical maniac I am. Is uh, somehow I always bring it back to me and my favorite teams. My magic aren't even in this conversation, and I've brought them here to it. You ready? Ready to follow my rabbit hole down to the Orlando Magic from last oh, night's man, game? I- I love where you're going with this. This is like the Kevin Bacon game, but the Orlando Magic, isn't it? So the Philadelphia 76ers drafted Joel Embiid however many years ago, and it was not the start anyone had hoped for, correct? Right. I riddled agree with, with that. Riddled with injuries and just not good play, and it really started making people in Philadelphia to not trust the process because they've been tanking, and they've been getting players, and it just wasn't, they weren't getting what they wanted and what they needed and what they thought the future was. And then something happened. Joe LMB remained healthy. They got Ben Simmons, and things started to click, and then they made some trades. And now they're in the second round of the playoffs, blowing out the second seed Toronto Raptors with Kawhi Leonard and Siakam and, and all that goodness. And Joe LMB had himself a night last night. It was amazing to watch him i mean he was hitting threes he was making you know gasol his uh his b word he was uh whatever whatever he wanted to do he did it he was blocking Kawhi leonard i mean he looked like 
a future NBA superstar, did he not? He I mean, did. He was the best. He was the best player on the court last night, and it wasn't even close. I mean, Kawhi still had his points. He had thirty three, but like Joel Embiid's thirty three, ten rebounds was just all over the place. Well, you um, say future superstar. He he he's legit. Like he's well, the top ten guy right now okay. in the NBA. Well, okay. So what I mean is, he's becoming to to me super. Like right now, he's a star and he's an all star, right. but he's the superstar to me is still that Steph Curry, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, like those people that we talk about every single day. Joel Embiid is not at that point where we're talking about what Joel Embiid had for breakfast and what Joel Embiid said on Twitter and what Joel Embiid said to, you know, Kyrie Irving in the in the locker room. Like we're not at that point yet with Joel, but he's on he's well on his way and performances like last night are putting him up in that stratosphere of the guys I mentioned. Like is that is that a fair assessment? Oh, yeah, that's a fair assessment. It's kind of what Giannis has become this year. Right. That Joel Embiid's exactly. that next guy to be that. That next guy up. And it's exciting for the East. And that's why it's another reason why I hope Kawhi Leonard stays. So how does this tie into the Magic? Well, the 76ers... Well, how does it? The 76ers had another number one overall pick. And it was a very slow start. Riddled with injuries and um, not a lot of progress. And the hope that it would turn into a superstar pick and be a part of this all-star lineup, it, it faded away quickly, did it not, Loudbeard? Sorry, I turned my mic off for a second. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 I agree, so, it faded quickly. So, instead of sticking with it like they did with Joel Embiid, they tossed him down to our magic for basically a bag of chips. And of course, I'm talking about Mark Fultz. And Joel Embiid made me think, wow, there is hope for our Orlando Magic. What if Mark Fultz has the same turnaround and the same quickly uprising from the ashes that Joel Embiid has had in the last couple of years. And it made me hopeful for the Magic. If Markel Fultz can become the player that Joel Embiid has become, become that number one overall pick like the Philadelphia 76ers thought he was, maybe the Sixers, Sixers knew what they were doing and they got all of their picks right because right now it looks like they have other than Markel Fultz. Like Joel Embiid's panned out, Ben Simmons has panned out. They've, they've done a solid job over there. So maybe they just gave up on, on Markel a little too early, and that's a good sign for Orlando Magic. Yeah, and I kind of feel like Markel Fultz is the Thanos of the NBA. He's just searching for his <laughs> stones. Once he gets all of, once he gets back his power stone and his soul stone and his reality stone and all of the stones, and he puts them back into his gauntlet, he'll regain all of his powers, and he will become the mighty. The, the mad titan of the NBA, and that's what I'm waiting for, and that's what Mar Markel Fultz will become. And uh, we did get a tweet in a few minutes ago, and I just want to mention this. Uh, at Scout Team Radio on Twitter, you can always hit us up. Scott Kaiser chimes in. He says, what drives me nuts about the gauntlet is it just what you're thinking at that moment. Uh, like, what if he had raided it, and all of a sudden Stay Puff Marshmallow Man showed up instead? So, yeah, what if... Markel Fultz or Thanos in Infinity War, instead of when he did the snap, it was exactly what he was thinking. And what if he would have thought about the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man? That could have easily happened. I'm just saying. So when Markel Fultz becomes the mighty Thanos and gets all of his uh, power stones back and, and becomes the, the player that he, we thought he would be with the Orlando Magic, just what if? I'm, I'm going down a rabbit hole myself here. I'm just You know, and it makes me think that... Digging. <laughs> What if, what if Harold and Kumar got a hold of the gauntlet? Then they would snap their fingers and they'd finally get their White Castle. Oh man! You know, Harold and Kumar that first movie, I loved that movie. I don't know what it was. There was that just something was epic. about it. It was so bad. It was great, and it was just maybe it was like the age I was when I, that movie first came out. That it was right in my wheelhouse. Like it, it was like could have happened adventure that was so much fun and then at the end the white castle is just such a, a great great uh no you missed the best part if. that's when that's when doogie hauser finally came back into our lives it really was that's when he he they're like neil patrick harris what are you doing here yeah uh that was and he, back and he took that and he PH. took that part and he just springboarded it into the rest of his acting career it, i mean it i think he needed that part to take away the doogie hauser ...ness of off of him. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, like I want to go back and rewatch it now. 
the sequels, I think I watched half of one. I, I never really got into them. They had a Harold and Kumar Christmas special or something and had several sequels. It got a little old, but that, that initial Harold and Kumar, man, that thing is lightning in a bottle. I loved it so much. Watched it over and over back in my college days. Well, Loudbeard, we had another tweet last night. Oh, All right, tell another, me about there... this. I didn't see this. I'm coming in with a live reaction for you. I, I just I need to hear it, hear it from you. What happened? Well, one of our new fans, Jenny of Ohio, listened to the show, and she tweeted at us. And it said, hold on. I got it here. Okay. At Scout Team, I heard you like the Canes. Here's why hashtag CBJ, the Columbus Blue Jackets, is better. I've heard of them. Yeah. One, Torts invented being a jerk. I don't know what that okay. means. Do you know what that means? Yeah. It, she's saying that player is, is more of a jerk than anybody else on the, the uh, okay. Canes. Yep. I don't know who Torts is. Sorry. Uh, you no, know, I don't either. I just, I, I'm going to pretend like I do. So, yeah, that's what that is. Fake it till All you right. make it, Chris America. Yeah. All right. Here's number two. Let me pull back up. Number two. Mascot Twitter fights with stool president greater than Viking chance. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Stoolies. Are you getting Are you getting convinced here? No. No, I'm not convinced at all. But uh, Jenny can continue on with her rants. Go ahead. All right. Here, here's one. And I think she knew what she was doing with this one. I think she's listened to the show for enough to know that this is a point that needs to be made for you and I. Blue Jackets fought for America. Hurricanes fight against America. Oh God, that's a, that's that's it, a convincing right? point right there. I almost saved, I, I almost saved that one right for now. last, but oh, I was like, no, let me read mush. it verbatim. Yeah, all right. I don't even know we'll, how we'll, I'm gonna. We'll uh, even we'll even come back to that one again just to reiterate that great point. Yeah, Four. Four at Amy Jones underscore O three is a top flight Twitter mom, and I, I guess that's a player's mom. I don't know. Okay. I don't know who that is. She's a hockey. I don't know who that is. So we'll, we'll go with um, that. And then she replied to her own message. I guess added to the thread. Let me know when y'all want to talk hockey for longer than a minor penalty. Huh. Yeah. So hockey that talk. whole Blue Jackets fought for America. Hurricanes fight against America. Listen. I want people fighting for me, Loudbeard. I don't want them going against me. And I do hate hurricanes when they roll through Orlando. <sighs> she has one really good point, and that point is... America. I have to say that that was, that, that was well played. Um, I, the rest of the stuff, it, it, I like get Like if you it. were in the jury pool and that was her closing argument, you would have just stood up and said, Your Honor, we're ready to make a decision. We don't even need to go back. That was the, the mic the... drop of the whole thing. Yeah. For America against America. Gosh. I don't even know what, what to think. Like, she didn't even make the argument that the Blue Jackets totally annihilated our lightning. I, I, I thought that was coming. Like, I was sitting here ready for it. Like, oh, oh she's, gonna, she's coming out swinging. She didn't do that. I think that was res out of respect. Out of respect. She already knows that, yeah. that, that that wound has already been salted enough knowing that one of the best regular season teams of all time can't even get past the first round and get swept by the Columbus can't Blue Jackets. Can't even get a, get a, get a win. Couldn't even sniff at them. It was yeah. unbelievable. So it she knew that the, the salt was already in that wound. It was. It was totally embarrassing. She knew that. So she didn't, she didn't go below the belt, but she hit it. She hit you right in the heart, right? Right, right in the heart. America. Pulling out the America. heart strings. Yeah. She knows. Gosh. So, so Jenny of Ohio yeah. coming off the top ropes. You can hit us at Scout Team Radio just like she did. We have our live Twitter co-hosts, you know, like Scott Kaiser, Mike Berlon, Memphis Spence. Ian sometimes comes on. And then now we have podcast co-hosts coming off the top ropes. So real quick, we've already been talking about her tweeting hockey longer than a minor penalty. But I'm going to bring back the segment of Hockey Terms by Chris America and see if Loudbeard can figure out what these hockey terms mean. And this one's a little interesting, Loudbeard. Do you want to? You want me to start off easy and go a little bit harder? Yeah, why not? I'm I'm probably gonna suck at these anyway. So make me right. embarrass me in front of the world, in front of our fans. I, I'm I'm the originator of the segment called Hockey Talk with Loudbeard. Yes. And now now you're gonna make me really get into the the weeds here. But that's okay. I I like being embarrassed. That's why I once shaved my beard for, for well, the show. Yes. All right, saucer pass. Do you know what that is? A saucer pass. Um, I would say it's a soft pass to the defender. 
defenseman. Mm. Mm. No, it's a pass in which the puck is passed to another player such that it flies in the air like a flying saucer. Oh, that makes more sense. I this makes I the pass very that. difficult to intercept by opposing players. But it will right. land flat on the ice, making it simple to control for the receiving player. Ooh, that sounds uh, pretty technical. Saucer pass. Yeah, that's that's what I said, I think. All right, ready? A twig. Yeah. Uh, that's your hockey stick. Yeah, good job. See? Ding, 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 ding. There we go. That, I knew that saucer pass one. I just wanted to make you feel good. No, All I right. really didn't. Wave off. Um, that when somebody's coming, the line change, and the, the player on the ice is like, no, 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 and they wave them off. Like, get back in in your box. I need to stay out here. I'm good. And the crowd goes silent. I think Chris America's having some internet connectivity issues this morning, but that's okay. Um, there are severe thunderstorms near his area. As soon as you talk about Thor, lightning comes and thunder. I don't know if it's me or you, sir. No, it's me. I, I it's definitely me because I, I checked on... I checked on the actual radio station to see if you were still breaking up, and you weren't. You were clear. It's, it's my internet connection. Uh, I left you off with wave off, and apparently the internet decided to wave me off the internet. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I said it's when a player's on the ice, and then the line change comes, and he, he waves off like his sub, and he's like, no, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to play, keep playing. Like You, you okay. get back in. I waved you off. You're, you're in the spirit of it. It's, okay. yeah. You're in the spirit. I call of what that my means. spirit animal of uh, this segment. <laughs> the wave off it's, is my spirit animal. It's when a, a stoppage of play is about to occur, such as like icing or offsides. But the referee may decide to continue play by waving off the stoppage, kind of like in soccer. You know how there's a penalty, but the offense maintains possession, and so they the the referees don't stop the game. They let they wait until the defense yeah, they let them gets play control the, of the ball. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like that, I guess. Yeah, that's what I said. Exactly. <laughs> okay. I'm three for three. All right. A, a couple more here. Uh, here. Here's another one that might be easy for you. Odd man rush. Uh, is that when there's an odd man rushing at you? Um, he's got three eyes or he's yes. got, like, missing teeth uh -huh. or um, maybe Well, I mean, that, got... isn't that every, every hockey player has missing teeth? Oh, so I don't yeah, know if that's is, odd that's per point. se. Um, maybe he – okay, uh, this is it. Odd man rush. It's when a guy is coming full speed at you and he has all of his teeth. Odd man. That rush. is that is an odd man rush. <laughs> How did you know? Full uh, a mouthful of teeth player comes at you. No, it's, which uh, is the oddest thing you could ever see in hockey. No, I, I'm assuming it is when you have a power play and you go full attack at the other team and you've got more people. Odd. No, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean you're in the right. You're again. You're in the spirit of the term. Um, yes, I mean, this, this can't. This, this is my can, second spirit animal. This can happen in a power play, but it, it can also happen in just normal play. It's just when you get into like, you know, you pass the puck forward and you get into like a three on two or a two on one situation, rushing the net. All right, I like deal. It. Yeah. All right. So top cheddar, top cheese. Uh, the best player on your team. Mm, nope. It's when you score the top half of the net, either off or just below the crossbar. That's top okay. cheddar. Okay. All right, wow, one, one last I'm term. I'm sucking at this whole one. Okay. One you, last you, term mm. before the break. Plumber. Uh, we'll call that the Super Mario Brothers of hockey. Yeah, you got to have like a mustache and an Italian accent and a nice little beer gut. And yeah, you're the plumber. Uh, it's not the most skilled player, but a hard worker who will battle in the corners and in front of the net loud beard. That is a plumber. And... Well, speaking of Mario Brothers, on the other side of the break, we're going to do a video games turned into movies. We're going to draft those movies next. <laughs> hey, Kawhi, what are you laughing at, man? This isn't funny. Fantasy sports reimagined. FanDuel, that's what I'm talking about. It is more than just fantasy sports. It's the best way to watch the games, win real cash, and bring the action right to your living room. Just choose a contest, make your picks, watch, and win. And if you go to FanDuel.com slash STR today, you can get a $5 deposit bonus. Once again, that's FanDuel.com slash STR. <laughs> Come on, man. This is not a laughing matter.
When I'm working hard, I build up a thirst for sports. That's when I grab a cold 12-ounce sports radio. (sighs) 12-ounce sports radio. Quench your sports thirst. If you've been listening to Scout Team Radio for a long time, you know that myself, Loudbeard, has placed a bet or two in his day. That's right. I've lost the beard bet. I lost the romper bet. But one place I don't like losing is when I bet money. And I can easily do that at my bookie. That's right. You can go to mybookie.ag, use promo code 12OZSports, and get a 100% deposit bonus up to $1,000. Hey, guess what? That is a lot of money. Do it. Hey everybody, it's your favorite patriot, Chris America, and I want you to listen every single weekday, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and on replays from 11 a.m. to noon of Scout Team Sports. Listen, George Washington did not cross over the ocean blue in 1492 to defeat the Nazis, so you can listen to the same tired national clickbait sports stories. So once again, tune in to us every single morning, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and then we replay from 11 to noon. I will see you there, and God bless America. Thank you all for staying tuned for our second half of Scout Team Radio. We're bringing it to you hot and live each and every morning, Monday through Friday, on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. And we're also now being simulcast on Full Press Radio Network. We love it. Wow. It's been a great, great week so far. We're already at Friday. We've got a fun fantasy draft coming up. We'll tell you a little bit about that here in just a few minutes. Uh, we do like to get social. Hit us up on Twitter, at Scout Team Radio. Make sure you do that. And then always, if you can't catch the live show, you can always catch us on our podcast. We do have a par- partner podcast network that we're associated with, Barn Burner. You can check them out at barnburner.ca. You can also just go on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, anywhere you find a podcast and search Scout Team Radio. Ah, all of that is fun. So I just recently saw this trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog. And it, Honestly, I mean, I, I have a little bit of a, a expectation theory when it comes to video game movies. I, I don't expect them to be Academy Award-winning movies. I just I expect them to be fun, and I, I, I take them in for what they are. But this Sonic the Hedgehog movie was taking a lot of heat on Twitter and uh, taking a lot of heat. So the showrunners are actually like, well, we'll go ahead and make some adjustments. I guess there was a lot of heat about what Sonic looked like, and he didn't look close enough to the character on the video game. So they said they'd make some changes. So this inspired me, Chris America, to say, what other video game movies are out there that are a lot of fun that we like to watch? So you and I are going to do a draft of our favorite video game movies, and we're just going to have fun with this one because Sonic, he inspired me, and it may not be one of the greatest movies ever, but I'm sure that's going to be a fun flick when it comes out. Don't you agree? Oh. I think I heard him cut out again. That's all right. I can I can just roll. I might even just by myself here draft every movie. I'll do all ten picks myself because that's how I roll. Um, yeah, that's what I do. But this Sonic movie, uh, I I can't complain. I mean, it's got Jim Carrey in it. He looks like he's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, classic Jim Carrey. A lot of that you know bit character role. Um, a lot of that method acting. He's got all of it going on right in this this trailer, so he's going to be a great villain. Um, it looks like Cyclops from X Men is is the police officer in this of some sort, maybe a good guy. I don't know. Uh, didn't look like there was enough rings involved, but Sonic looks like he's fast. Anyway, Sonic the Hedgehog could be quite quite the flick. Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. So as soon as I get Chris America back on the line here, we're going to go ahead and jump into this draft. But before I do that, uh, I do want to say. And I'll bring this story up because I think it's important important to talk about this. But D'Angelo Russell cited for marijuana possession at a New York airport. Uh, I've, I've, we've talked about this on the show a little bit in the past. But 
are we kind of over the whole marijuana being such a bad thing? Like, it, it shouldn't be considered, like, this heinous crime. It's really becoming legalized all over the place. Some places recreational. Uh, a lot of places medicinal. Uh, it just seems like eventually it's going to be legal everywhere. And I don't know. It's just, to me, D'Angelo Russell getting popped for marijuana at the airport, like, it's a non-news story that became a big story. I, I don't get it. Why can't we just get over it already? Now, Chris America, I, I hear... Oh, he, he, I just got a message. He's working on... um working on a couple things. I thought I heard him in the background there. I could hear him, hear some of his uh, studio equipment making some clanking and stuff. Thought that was him. But I'll, I'll move on to the next story. Danny Ainge has a mild heart attack. So I feel bad for this guy. Now the term, the word mild is typically good when a it's referred to a heart attack. Never good to have a heart attack. I'm not saying that. But mild, that means it is something that Hopefully it will be he will recover fully and they will take care of him and, and take a look at what the problem is. Uh, that's definitely something that to be concerned about. But right now in the, the playoff hunt, the Celtics are, are, are going at it. So we'll see if this creates some sort of extra motivation for this Boston Celtics team. I don't know if they need that extra motivation or not, but maybe they'll play one for the Gipper. Danny Ainge being the Gipper with this mild heart attack. Uh, I wish him a full and quick recovery. And, you know, we want to make sure that all of all of our friends are are healthy and happy. And I don't know Danny Ainge. He's really not my friend. But I actually think that of all people. I want all people to be healthy. Um, I'm not Thanos. I do not want to snap my fingers and, and hope the whole world disappears. Uh, Steven Strasburg, he has, he has been kind of a, an interesting character through his entire career. Uh, I, I am a Nationals fan. I'm not a diehard Nationals fan by any means, but I I like the team. Uh, I follow them, and I remember when Steven Strasburg came onto the scene. He burst onto the scene as one of the top players in all of Major League Baseball. Uh, and Chris America, I'm going to finish my thought here in just a second, but is that you? Do I hear you rumbling in that background? That's me. The studio ghost, I guess, is over here messing with my internet connection. Oh, man, he's, we are having He's on some, a terror today. He, we are. Um, I was just mentioning how Steven, Steven Strasburg busted on the scenes years ago, but he has become the fastest pitcher to 1,500 strikeouts in, in MLB history. So congratulations to him. And with that being said, and now that I have you back, let's do this. So can fast. I ask a question? No, You're asking us to – this is probably going to be the hardest draft if we do it the way that you want to do it, and that is the best video game movies. Do we want to do best or our favorite? I think we should do our favorite because best is really. I don't hard have to a sing. favorite though because they're all so bad. There aren't oh. many video game movies that are good. I agree with you, but so I feel like it'd be easier to draft the worst video game movies. Uh, I, I actually looked at that and I was looking. And there's some really bad ones. Like there's apparently a Double Dragon movie from 1994, which oh, is considered yeah. one of the worst movies of all time. I never saw that. I don't. Street Fighter. Mortal Kombat uh, yeah, 2. This is, yeah, Mortal Kombat Mario 2. Mario Brothers. Yes. Mario Brothers. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. We could have done it that way. I See, this right, is we'll what do you best. say to your we'll favorite. Do, do you want to do best? Well, we are your, your favorite. I I generally avoid video game movies because they are so bad. So I'm going okay. to do the best I can. I won last draft handedly. So if I lose, I'll, I'll bow out gracefully on this one. What, could we say the best of the worst video game movies? Or no, the no, worst we'll just, of the we'll best? We'll just go with your favorite. That way it's it's vague, right? We like general yeah. generalizations. All right. So my favorite, am I am I number one? I think you went number one. This is a yeah, terrible yeah, draft to go number one on, by the way. <laughs> <It really is. laughs> do you want to do our Batman Fight Club this time and then we'll we'll come back to the drawing board next time? Um let's do the no. uh, let's do this. Come we'll on. do this. All right. And we'll do Batman Fight Club next week. We're gonna change it up. We're going right. away from Fantasy Draft. Next Friday we will do Batman Fight Club. And I actually, I'm excited about Batman Fight Club, but I just prepared a list of all these movies, and I don't want my list to go to waste. It's really, it's selfish reasons. Is that okay with you? That's that's perfectly fine. All right, number one in Loudbeard's favorite video game movies of all time. Um, this is one that, to me, really kicked off the zombie genre. 
and that would be Resident Evil and Mila uh or no, yeah, Mila Jovovich. Yeah, Mila Jovovich, yep. Oh my god. It, her in this movie, uh you know, she started it off with the whole fifth element and then jumped into oh, this yeah. movie. Gosh. Body with a body, man. Woo! Yeah. I, Fire. Young Loudbeard, I'm telling you. He liked him some Mila. But Resident Evil, my number one pick. Going for it. All right. Number two pick for me, or number, yeah, my first pick. I'm going to go with another hottie with a body. Female, strong female cast here. We're both leading off with some strong female roles here. I'm going to go Laura Croft, Tomb Raider, with Angelina Jolie. All right. I'm glad you picked that because um, I honestly did not like that movie. Never saw it, but it's number one on this maximum list, so I'm taking it. All right. Look at you. You're just falling into the trap. Yeah. Uh, all right. So now I'm lo- I'm looking down my list. I have a couple couple decent movies here, um, but I'm gonna go with my heart. And I know this isn't a great movie, but I really enjoyed it. It was a fun movie, and this is one of my favorite video game movies of all time. And that would be the one of I, I gotta I gotta set this up a little bit better. You ready for this? Portals. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get me some yep. Mortal Kombat. You know Got to go Mortal's Kombat, yeah. Mortal Kombat. Portal's Kombat. The first one, though, not the second one. No, the second one's the worst movie of all time. And the first one, it's not a great movie, but my intro, if everybody doesn't remember who Loudbeard is, this whole intro that I have every morning... You are the most egotistical, self-deluded person I have ever met. It's Sonya talking to Johnny in this one. So I'm just saying that's from is it Mortal really? Kombat. Yeah, it is. Interesting. You didn't know that? Yeah. No. It's Mortal I, I, I just thought it was from some song you found. No. No. I Actually, I found it, and I didn't realize it was from Mortal Kombat. And I was, Mortal Kombat was on the other day. And then I think Anthony told me. That's what it was. Anthony told me he was watching something and, and saw it. So I, I got curious, and I had to go figure out where it was from. And it's totally from Mortal Kombat. All right. My second pick. 80s classic, everybody knows it, everybody loves it, Tron. All right, that was on my list. That's very quality. Uh, I like it. So my next movie that I'm going to select is a new movie, um, but it was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, one of my Johnson, one of my favorite actors of all time. Uh-huh. He is in Rampage. Yeah, I didn't see that one yet. I kind of wanted good. to see it. I love the video game. The video game was cool. Like, I like video games where you get to be a bad guy sometimes. And in Rampage, it's kind of what you are, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the guy knocking out all the the buildings, killing people. You're the yeah, the monster. Yeah, that absolutely. You're right. It's like Wreck It Ralph, but with monsters. All right, here's another movie I didn't see, but it's got the dude from. um, It looks like it has the dude. Yeah, Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad. I'm going to go Need for Speed. Never saw it, but it's number five on this list, and Aaron Paul's in it, so it must be good. Oh, and there's Michael Keaton in this movie? All right, I'm going to have to find out. Where I got I to gotta watch this movie now. See, I, I didn't see that movie, so I, I, any movie I didn't see, I didn't put on my list. Now, <laughs> that would narrow I'm you down you, quite like, a bit. I'm looking at this whole list of 20, and after after we're done with the draft, I'll I'll tell you all the movies in the list of 20 that I have seen. It's not many. All right. Okay. I like that. Um, my next uh, favorite superhero movie is Hitman. Uh, this came out uh, mid two thousands. It had Timothy Oliphant in it, uh, and he plays Agent Forty Seven. Uh, yeah, uh, it was a fun movie. I really enjoyed it, and I'm going Hitman with my next pick. Um, I'm gonna go with a movie I have actually seen. It's a classic. I was a huge Jean-Claude Van Damme fan as a kid. I watched Time Cop. I watched all of his movies, Bloodsport, that kind of stuff. I was really into that. I was one of those kids that was really into those like 80s, 90s fight action movies that were so cheesy, but I just liked watching them do all their karate movies. Like I, I was a big Steven Seagal fan, Jean-Claude Van Damme, all those types of movies. I, I was all about it. So I'm going to go Street Fighter. All right. Well, good choice And I thought there. Street Fighter... I honestly thought Street Fighter was better than Mortal Kombat. Maybe because I was such a big Jean-Claude Van Damme fan. Yeah, I think sometimes it was the ties you had to the video game, too. If you were like, yeah. a, you loved playing Street Fighter, well, and then you got to see them on screen, 
no, I think I did like Mortal Kombat the game better because it was uh, so edgy and you had the the blood and the fatalities and then the guy that comes out and says, Toasty! Okay. Mm. But the movie just wasn't that good. All right, my next pick, my last pick for this fantasy draft. I'm going with Silent Hill. A little bit of a, a, a horror genre in the video game side and a quality horror movie based off of it. So Silent Hill is my fifth pick in this fantasy draft. Good pick, good pick. You, you I think all of your picks were in the top ten for this. Um, let's see. So I will pick... Just because I loved the first video game, I didn't really play any of the other ones. And it's very high on the list. It's that number 17 on this list, so maybe it wasn't that good of a movie. But the video game was fantastic, so hopefully they did the movie. The movie did the game justice, and that's Max Payne. Okay. I remember did seeing that movie, but I don't remember it being that good. Um, yeah. So I, and I haven't seen it probably since it came out. Wasn't um, Matt? No, uh, not Matt, Dave, Matt. Mark Wahlberg was in that, I believe. Maybe. Does that sound right? Sure. Okay. You're going going with it. So, one video game I'm glad they never made a movie after, and I think I would be really mad if they did, is Grand Theft Auto. I feel like that's a game, like, it's it's cinematic, and, and it's a movie in and of itself, each game that they do, and I would hate to see them try to create that on the screen. Like, you cannot fit a full Grand Theft Auto and do it the right way it's supposed to be done in a two-hour. It would have to be, like, a four hour five hour six hour movie uh yeah i'm surprised they haven't maybe no, it's i am too it's so I'm... difficult but yeah. yeah so the movies that are on this top 20 list that i have seen there's 20 movies listed here number 20 i have seen super mario brothers number 19 i have seen street fighter i have not seen doom i have not seen max Payne. i have not seen wing commander i have not seen warcraft i have not seen blood rain never seen assassin's creed Prince of Persia, nope. Ace Attorney, don't even know what that is. I've never never heard of even it. heard of it. <laughs> Far Cry, nope. Uh, Rampage, not yet. Silent Hill, no. Hitman, no. Mortal Kombat, yes. Need for Speed, no. Tron, yes. Final Fantasy, King's Glove, Glaive, whatever, nope. And Resident Evil, no. And Laura Croft, Tomb Raider, no. All right. Well, it sounds like you've got... This was a good topic for you. You probably, yes. When I suggested this, you're probably like, oh, what the heck? I was like, damn it, I'm going to lose this it. one. Because I, yeah. I just avoid video game movies at all costs because they're so bad. I don't know what it is, why they can't convert these really good video games with really good storylines and make them into movies. But they just, somewhere, somehow... Maybe they should give it to, to the MCU. MCU's really good at converting a, an entertainment product and converting it into a movie. Yeah, so phase four can be like video games. It's That's not a right. bad idea. No, um, it's not. I, I will say, a lot of people hate on Super Mario Brothers. I mean, I haven't seen it in probably 10, 15 years, but when I first saw it, I thought it was a fun movie. I thought it was a fun movie. I probably could go back know. and hate it. It was pretty bad, wasn't I, it? I, I, think, I think because Mario is so cartoonish, and they tried to make it so real. Like, like Yoshi looked like a freaking dinosaur, like a terrible-looking dinosaur. And then he was barely in the movie. And then the Goombas were like these big, giant dudes with tiny heads. And it's just it, like it, none of it made sense. Uh, but it had John Leguizamo in it, so that made that's, it good. That's true. If, um, they had J, if they had JCVD in there, I would have been all about it. Mm, okay. Uh, Doom, that was kind of a, a, a fun movie. Uh, Rock also in this one. Love movies with The Rock. But they did the whole first person perspective in one of the scenes and it just made it look like a video game on the camera and I don't know that it worked but it was kind of interesting just to see that feel uh, anyway but Warcraft I saw that, was that one the whole movie no no it was just the last like there was a, a scene okay for good. the last like uh, that would have drove me nuts five or six minutes or during probably the last 15 minutes of the movie there was a five minute clip where it did it and it was just kind of to emphasize, I don't know, it, it, it didn't work, but it wasn't terrible. I don't know, I, whatever. Um, and then I also mentioned Warcraft. Warcraft wasn't a terrible movie either. It, again, these aren't good movies. I don't think any of these movies on this list I would say were good movies. Tron, the, the remakes of Tron, pretty good. If you go back and watch the 1982 Tron, 
the digital graphics in this movie are fantastic. I'm just putting that out. So um, it basically looks like you're you're watching an Atari video game and then a movie at the same time. Well, Loudbeard, you know what my favorite thing about doing our drafts now is? What's that? Disappointing Scotty Kaiser. <laughs> oh, yeah? Did he tweet at us? I didn't He's, he he gave us three right. tweets. He said first one was, if Mortal Kombat isn't the first overall pick, then you guys done messed it all up. Oh, I took him second overall. I yeah. Took Resident Evil, then Mortal Kombat. Come on. He's right, though. Mortal Kombat's quality. And then quality. He, went, he did a whelp at Scout Team Radio, and it's a gif of a chick looking at a computer, utterly disgusted, pushes the table out of the way, and storms off. And then his final response to our draft, Super Mario Brothers isn't just one of the worst video game movies. It's one of the worst movies, period, of all time. The only thing fun about it is when the credits rolled. I must have watched that when I was a kid or something. I haven't, we did. I haven't seen we did. it in a long time. I saw it like when I was a kid. If I rewatched it. Oh, you'd hate it. It's a, it's yeah. a, it's what a year did that movie. come out, by the 93, way? 93, 94, somewhere around there. So we were oh, like 10, 11. Oh, when you're, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to blame it on being young. Young and naive, okay, Scott? Young and Just dumb. Just give me a break, please. Yeah. Um, we only have a couple minutes left. I have to bring up this one quick story. It's sports-related, Chris America. Real quick. Mm -hmm. Noah Syndergaard last night. He is a one-man show. He does a complete game where they win one nothing, and the only run scored was a home run that he hit as a pitcher. I have to say, that's solid. What That's Oprah solid. That is Oprah solid. First player to do such a feat since 1983. Hey, that was the year I was born. Look at you, youngster. It's 35 years ago, going yeah. on 36. I was born in 82, so I am the old man of the crew. You are. I, I'm feeling old right now. Just old, old man. And you know what else is old? This What's episode. That? This yeah. episode's gotten old. It got old real quick. I'm just going to have to say, have a great weekend, friends. Yeah, if you missed any of our shows, make sure you check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, and ScoutTeamRadio.com. Please subscribe to all of those channels. We love you. We'll miss you. Have a great weekend. Hashtag ban the DH. I agree with you, Scott Kaiser. I agree.